Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 317 of Optimal Living Advice with me, your host, Greg Audino. And this is the very rare occasion here on OLA uh, in which today's episode marks the beginning of a two parter. This has happened at least once, I think twice before. Forgive me uh, for not going through the whole catalog beforehand to give you an exact answer. You should probably just listen to all the other 316 episodes to find out for yourselves. Nothing wrong with that. But anyway, we have another two-parter this time. If the episode title is any indication to you, you might imagine why. Certainly, you'll understand once I read the question. There's going to be a lot to talk about here, uh, as we have some highly important matters and ideas to discuss today. And I can't say enough that I am beyond grateful to be doing so. So, let's hear the question and jump right into part one as we optimize your life. I'm currently 37 years old. I have terminal illnesses, and thanks to modern medicine, I could possibly live another 30 years, but there's no way of knowing for sure how long I will be here on Earth. I also am struggling with addiction issues, which are becoming increasingly more difficult to cope with. As a result of this situation, I have become detached from the people and things that I was at one time very close to, such as my children, family, and friends. I no longer find the joy in simple activities that I once did. And in fact, I find it difficult to even begin doing them, let alone finishing them. How can I derail this depression and get myself back into the present moment so I can be closer to my children, family, and friends once again? I'm scared to death that the rest of my life will pass me by before the depression passes. Okay, and an impossibly big thank you to the asker for sending this question in. You know, part of me, uh, maybe like many of you who've just listened to this question, and presumably the asker himself, uh, is wondering where to begin. Now, needless to say, all of the questions we take here are meaningful and they're appreciated, and they would not be submitted if they didn't have a big impact on the lives of those inquiring. But you know, I, like I'm sure all of you, am not immune to feeling as though certain questions have a particular weight to them. There's no need to pretend that this isn't one of those times, and ask her, I hope you don't feel as though this takes away from the great joy that it brings me to field your questions uh, three days a week. Not at all. A question like this is a really true privilege. Personally, it's a privilege to be trusted with this type of subject matter. And I feel that for all of our sakes, it's a privilege to be deprived of any falsehoods or distractions for a moment. It's a privilege to be reminded of what's real. Um, you know, as a question like this, to me, really provides a glimpse into the extent of human emotion, how far we can be pushed on the spectrum of what we can feel in this life. For the more privileged of us, this glimpse is rare. For those less privileged, it's more frequent. But for a moment, I find it very equalizing. You know, of course, we're all living under the shadow of death, and, uh, but it, it, it can be much easier for some of us to feel distanced from that than others. And luckily, uh, this is not one of those times. Now, I've never had a brush with death in this way. Of course, I've lost people and you know, I've lost pets. I've been around and experienced suffering, but not nearly to the degree that some have, including you, Asker. So, no, you know, I, I haven't been there, which isn't what I was asked about, but I feel compelled to say anyway. I do think about death each and every day precisely because of what I've said about it being a great equalizer and uh, a truth that I think is just kind of foolish to ignore. You know, forget the morbidity of it. That's nonsense. It's, it's an honest and unavoidable pillar of our lives. To lean into it and confront it is to provide ourselves with life's best measuring stick. What does death tell us about our time, our gifts, our reality? What does it tell us about how to spend or how to relate to these things? It tells us everything if we choose to let it. But, uh, you know, for those like me who just think, think, think about it, I don't believe we are informed the way that you are, Asker. What I assume you're going through based on, you know, a hybrid of my imagination and my talks with other people who have been at, at the line, so to speak, is that it feels hard to be enthusiastic about your children and your family and your friends precisely because you are so terribly aware of how finite they are. The idea of loss is everywhere. It's a lot to deal with. 
it's likely easier to try numbing this pain through the use of alcohol or narcotics or whatever it is that you're addicted to and looking for some control or some version of weightlessness instead of getting too close to the things you love only to know that losing them could happen at any moment and at best will be in 30 years from now, still at an age that feels too soon. It might comfort you, though, to remember that even in the midst of this extraordinarily isolating experience, you are not alone. Many people who live with this closer relationship to death are like you in that they can't help but have the same awareness and the same detachment that you have. So, my first suggestion might be to seek out those people. Start if you haven't already and keep going if you already have. Look for those who can share your understanding and or help you with the addictive response to your trauma. Um, this might mean joining Narcotics Anonymous or Alcoholics Anonymous if these are the basis of your addiction. It might mean looking for ways to unite with veterans or the homeless maybe. Again, those who have been pushed to similar limits in regards to just being acutely aware of how precious life is and how quickly it can end. Uh, or it might mean going to see a therapist or a grief counselor too. Now, you may be the only person in your circle who can understand the depths of what you're going through. And given how crippling some of your current thoughts and behaviors are right now, you might forget that there is still a world of people out there who can help and or relate to you. So find them. Find those people. These people and many others are not going to try and sugarcoat things for you. They are very aware that it can all go in a flash. You know, my childhood friend, who's an ex-Marine, he, uh, he openly described to me one time how difficult it is for him to find significance or comfort in anything. Because at any moment, he, you know, he would be unsurprised to see someone walk through the door and start shooting. But the truth is, even if it's hard to believe given how fragile the world has suddenly become to you, is that just because our greatest sources of love are so finite, perhaps too finite, it doesn't mean they aren't beautiful. And like I said, there's going to be more to come in our Friday show, everybody. Now, I will say that for any of you who might be concerned about making the asker wait for the rest, uh, do know that anytime I answer a question for someone, I give them the option of receiving a written transcript of my thoughts and ideas. And that happens well before the episode airs. We're typically a month or two ahead in the production of all of our shows across the network. Um, for those who might have been looking for some behind-the-scenes info. And on OLA, of course, I try to get back to people as quickly as possible so that they don't have to wait if they don't want to. Uh, that being said, though, plenty prefer to wait and hear it organically when it airs. Anyway, uh, I thought I would mention that. So for those of you who might want to reach out with a question of your own, you can do so and you will hear back quickly. All communication is as prompt and efficient as possible. So... Yeah, if you have a question of your own, do send it on into advice at oldpodcast.com, advice at oldpodcast.com, and I look forward to hearing from you there. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and don't forget to tune back in for our very important part two on Friday. That's where your optimal life awaits. <laughs>